Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. Welcome to the course entitled The Plan and Business Structures. Now, guys, this course is going to get you one continuing education credit for your North Carolina Irrigation Contractors Licensing Board license renewal. So, guys, you know, 1231, we got just a few days till uh, we uh, have to renew our irrigation license and make sure that that bond is in full effect before we can renew our license. And so, guys, I put together this PowerPoint. It comes directly from the Landscape Contractor's Guide to Business Law and Project Management. And yes, I have not gotten it approved uh, by the Landscape Board. There's not enough time before this um before the, the irrigation season runs out. So it'll probably be available sometime or another in the near future uh, as an online course. But all of the landscape contractor courses in the Business Vision 2020 course, uh, I've already approved and set up. And then those seven hours, guys, five of those hours will be able to um, apply to your irrigation license next year. But let's go ahead and jump strong and jump deep into the plan and business structures and when i'm talking about the plan i'm talking about a business plan and so hopefully hopefully you already know how to do that i mean you're in business i mean surely to goodness you had to put together a business plan before you started operating a business how did you get the money to start it but we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh in the next few slides and then we're going to talk a little bit about business structures on how to set up your business and how to run it whether it be an llc C corporation, S corporation, uh, partnership, joint venture, or whatever, whatever you decide to do. And you know that Eric Jones, a turf teacher, is 100% all about which type of business entity or business structure. It is the C corp. And if you've heard me speak in the past before in face-to-face -face seminars and online, you you know why. I like everything to be separate. I like my business to be 100% standing on its own. If I'm to drop dead the next day, that C corp can continue on in existence with somebody stepping in and filling my shoes. And you know, I've already dropped dead once. I've already had one heart attack at 39 years old so uh, I know I've been there I've done that and uh, not that I was a big boy or anything like that I just got back from uh, from a deployment I was in the best shape of my life um, eating army chow every day working out in the uh, the army gym I, I mean I was fit I mean we were we had just gotten back we got back in April I had the heart attack uh, in November so it was less than six months left uh, later but uh, you know with with all the the stuff that we did the flying the driving and everything like that I started developing blood clots and boom threw a blood clot in my right leg one day it hit my heart and I fell over I saw God I saw what it's like in the afterworld and um, guys I'll tell you it's 100% true what they say in the Bible you, you God exists I saw him I met him and and thank thank the Lord that he chose me um, to stay down here a little bit longer so uh, maybe he wanted me to teach you about the plan and business structures and that's what I'm getting ready to do so anyway we're gonna jump into our objectives guys we're gonna understand what entrepreneurship is and, and I know all about these guys on Instagram YouTube and everything that's in the green industry talking about I'm an entrepreneur I'm a law entrepreneur and all this stuff guys you know, the licensed professional, in my opinion, is the entrepreneur, the guy that is running the legit business, not the one man show or one woman show that has 10 residential mowing clients. You're not an entrepreneur if that. So we're going to talk about that, what it is to be an entrepreneur. We're going to talk about the benefits of a business plan and why you need to have it. I think anytime you start a new segment of your business whether you're going from lawn care and then you're stepping into um, landscape management or you're stepping into landscape design you need to do a business plan for each segment that you're starting within your company it's kind of like having a company of multiple companies and so um, it's just something you got to have and then we're going to um, start the process of looking at elements of a business plan what is included in the business plan and then some of the business plan pitfalls and then we move into um, these business structures or the business entities as what we like to call the sole proprietor uh, the partnership the c corp the s corp the limited liability company or llc 
And then we're going to summarize these business legal structures and then talk a little bit about joint ventures. Uh, and that might be where two corporations form a uh, partnership or form that joint venture. They come together for, uh, you know, one big project or, you know, they're going to tackle something together. And then last but not least, talk about naming and registering your name in North Carolina. And I am a firm believer keeping your name out of your company name. So yes, I was a home builder at one time. I had Eric W. Jones Incorporated as a general contractor. Never do that again. I am 100% proud of my name. I love my name. That is the, that is guys, your, your first name is the only true thing that you really own. That's what your parents gave you. You own that first name. You know, you had no choice on your last name that, you know, you were giving it to it. So really that first name, it's yours. Um, but I love my name, but I want the, the business or my entity to have its own identity. And that's why I have turf teacher incorporated. And that's why I have elite landscape service, Inc. You do not see anything Eric W. Jones associated with it. I want, um, you know, my kids one day, maybe to possibly take them over if they have any interest in it or a nephew, uh, or anybody, anything like that. Maybe even a grandchild. Maybe I live long enough to, uh, to see my grandchildren, go into the green industry. So, you know, and we've all got our reasons why we name our companies the, the way we do. And, and we've all got our reasons why we choose that business entity that we do. So let's just move forward guys and talk about being an entrepreneur. And if you follow me enough on social media, you'll know that uh, I am a true fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, he has the handle name Gary V on all social media. Um, you know, I've actually got to talk with him. You know, we've did a, we've done an Instagram live. He's actually called, uh, my cell phone, uh, a time or two just to discuss things. Um, and, and, and that's that he's been very inspirational in my life, especially doing, um, the entrepreneurship stuff with, with the turf teacher. And so, um, you know, you got a lot of guys out there and a lot of gals that, that claim to be entrepreneurs, but you know, are they truly that entrepreneur or are they just putting that on their business card? Guys, you, you know what it's like. I mean, you're, you're probably listening to, to me and, and possibly mad because you're probably listening to me at uh, 10 or 11 o'clock at night, trying to get your continuing education credits. Um, but you're the entrepreneur. You're the ones out there working, you know, all day long, all night into the night, and then coming home, having to do the paperwork. You're running every aspect of your business. Uh, and you are that, that true entrepreneur. So you don't have a, another job, uh, that you have to uh, take care of and then cut grass on the side. You know, if you have a full-time job somewhere else, you know, Gary V says you are not the entrepreneur. Now I may contradict myself. I claim to be an entrepreneur. I do. I do teach at the college. Guys, I would teach at the college if they didn't pay me one dime because I love standing up in front of a group of people talking. I, I love to teach. That is my passion. Uh, and, you know, eventually there, there'll be a time where I have to step away from, from the college because Elite Landscape Services is, is growing, you know, leaps and bounds. We're putting a lot of effort into that. And yes, that is kind of my goal. But even if I do step away from the college, I'm still going to teach, you know, one or two classes if they let me a semester, just so I have that connection with the students and have that connection with the classroom. So, but guys, poor planning and inefficient management skills are overriding factors in business failure. I mean, they say like one out of five businesses fail. It may even be more, um, you know, or only one out of five survive. So it's uh it's it's a situation where you know you can get caught up in in a situation running the business where the business actually runs you you're not running it and so the top reasons that business fail are because of poor sales poor marketing skills and hopefully guys i mean there's enough free information on how to market yourself on the internet and the social media apps that 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 shouldn't be an issue at all. You, nobody should have poor marketing skills. We can market ourselves 100% all the time, 100% free by organic content and running uh, small ads on Instagram and Facebook. There's, there's no excuse for it. High operation expenses. Yes. How many times do you see that young entrepreneur 
uh, buy that $50,000 truck, and they've got two $15,000 walkers on it, which I love walker mowers, always have and always will. Um, but, you know, they go $100,000 in debt right off the bat, and they may have 15 yards to cut. You know, so, you know, way, way too high of expenses right there. Difficulty collecting invoice payments. <laughs> Man, I do not have a problem knocking on the door and saying, hey, you owe me some money. Let's get me paid. And, you know, using things like jobber payments and, and accepting credit cards and, and having all that, guys, there's ways to get your money. You don't have to, to wait. But a lot of that times the difficulty collecting invoice is, is because you wait too long to invoice them. People aren't going to pay you three months later. You know, they're going to they're going to wait just as about as long as it took you to invoice them. So if you invoice them a day, maybe they'll send it in two days. But if you wait two months to invoice them, they'll think, well, heck, man, he don't need the money. They'll send it out to you a little bit later. Inventory issues. Well, you know, are, do you, are you extended out on your credit? Can you not get the inventory that you need? Um, poor location. Well, it really shouldn't matter in our industry, the green industry, unless we're a retail garden center. But most of us operate our businesses, you know, either on a farm or in our backyard or anything like that. So that's, I don't see that really being an issue. Too many fixed assets. Well, again, it kind of goes back to uh, high operation expenses. Did you buy too much? Did you need it? And then fraud. So really, guys, you know, if you're listening to this lecture, this isn't an issue for you because you've already made it. You're in the business. You're running your business. This is why the younger crowd that comes into this business may fail and not stay in it as, as long as we are. So understanding entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a person engaged in strategic activities that involve the initiation and development of a new business created to build long-term value and steady cash flow. It is all about 100% Cash flow. You can rob Peter to pay Paul for two years is what my accountant has told me. He said, Eric, at the end of two years, if you're having to borrow from Peter to pay Paul, it's going to come tumbling down. And guys, I've seen it happen. You see it happen all the time. And you, and you can kind of feel it. There's there's slow times that we get and, and everything else. And so we'll see that happen. But, you know, we, 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 we fight back, we build back, we get some new clients, we get through the tough times. But you can see it happen with the newer crowds that's coming into the business. They're borrowing all this money. Then they have to borrow money to pay the borrowed money back. It's just a continuing cycle. But at the end of two years, it comes crashing down 100%. Risk taking a future entrepreneur must weigh all of the rewards and drawbacks of beginning a business. And, and what happens is guys to, to be an entrepreneur, you do not work nine to five. And I can't understand that that is what people do every, every single day. I, I think I would go absolutely insane if I was home every day at five o'clock. I couldn't do it. And I tell my wife every single day, I can't be home at five o'clock. I'm not the five o'clock husband. I love my job way too much. And she understands that. She's like, you you are consumed by your work. You love it. That's your passion. She said, you are 100% happy when you've worked your tail off every single day. Guys, it's 11 p.m. and I'm recording this lecture right now and I am nowhere ready to go to bed or even go home. I want to do what I'm doing all day long. There's not enough hours in the day for me because I enjoy it. And I think that is part of the true entrepreneurship is that you have this passion for whatever it is you're doing. If you're selling candles, if you're a green industry expert or a green industry professional, or if you're a dentist, it doesn't matter. If you are 100% truly happy, you're going to want to work all the time. It's what we do. It's in our blood. And, and the average Joe or Jill out there can't do this. And they can't have a spouse that's not going to understand what it's like to be an entrepreneur. You know, I basically say Monday through Friday, I don't see my family. I love them to death. You know, I'll eat supper with them, but I'm back at it. You know, I'm back in the office. I'm back doing lectures here at 11 o'clock at night because I love what I do. And I want to help you guys understand uh, what it's like um, to run your own business. But you know it. You know it. That's why you're listening to this lecture at 11 p.m. as well. But uh, you have to weigh those rewards and those drawbacks. And guys, you have to go all in. You have to go all in. And, and if you're young, you know, 
push harder, push harder. But I think, you know, guys in their 40s, gals in their 40s, I'm 46 years old right now, and I feel like I'm just getting started. You know, I'm ready to to do whatever it takes to build this business to, to something 10 times greater than I can ever be individually. I want this business to be itself, have my kids or my grandkids or somebody take it over and my legacy stay with it after I'm long gone. That's that's what being an entrepreneur is. That's what it's about is having that passion and realizing, hey, you're not going to be home at five o'clock every single day. So rewards, hey, you're, you're all, your own boss. I mean, basically, in, in what happens when you are the boss yourself, guys, the blame stops with you. There's nobody else to blame when you're an entrepreneur. You can't blame um, the employee that messes up. you got to blame yourself because you're the one that hired him. Everything stops with you when you're your own boss. That can be a reward, and that can also be a challenge. So maybe we should put that on either side of the columns here. But you have a flexible schedule. Bull crap. I work every single day, all day long. But, yes, if I want to go to my kids' um, soccer practice or something like that at 3 o'clock uh, at the high school soccer field, I can do that. But uh, nine times out of ten, I'm working. Uh, more freedom and independence, eh, yes. But most entrepreneurs are so tied up in their business that they don't want to, they don't want that freedom. Yes, you make your own decisions and you receive personal satisfaction, and that's why we do it. 100% why we do it is that we're satisfied. Challenges, long work hours, but I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't think there's a day that I've worked um, only eight hours. Uh, in in 25 years, to be honest with you, and uh, I always tell people, hey, these long hours, uh, I'm fine. You know, guys, I finally got eight hours of sleep last night. It took me three nights to get it, but I got eight hours over over uh, the stretch of three days. I love it. I, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. Uh, challenges managing cash flow and payroll. Yes, that that's gonna that's always gonna be a um, a hurdle. But, you know, as you get more mature in running your own business, you, you find out that uh, there's ways to get through that and that, you know, from experience, guys, you know, when, you, when you're expecting that check and, you know, you're trying to make payroll the next day, for, you know, for some reason, you know, with hard work and, and, and good luck, they're, they're going to cross paths and that's going to not be uh, such a worry for you after you've been in business uh, for, for a few years. High potential for overwhelming responsibility. Yes, there's a lot of stress with it. There are a lot of suicides in the entrepreneurial world. Nobody hears about that, but uh, people can't handle the stress. They they can't face the fact that bankruptcy might be around the corner or anything like that. So they they get nervous. They 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 lose it, and 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 unfortunately they take their own lives. But we don't hear about that. Finding and keeping qualified employees, yep, 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 always will be an issue, and I don't know what we need to do about that. You know, I, I, I talked to you guys about using the social media not only to get new work, but to get new employees. Guys, the, the younger generation, they're, they're on uh, social media platforms such as Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram. You know, you have to run your employment ads there. Nobody's looking at the paper. You know, Indeed is still pretty strong. But, um, you know, and if you need some day labor, there's always the, uh, uh, the Craigslist. But if, you know, if you can connect with a group of high school students, um, I think that's where our labor shortage is going to be. Yeah, if you listen to my, my radio show um, this week on Turfs Up Radio, uh, I talked about using, um, you know, Snapchat and TikTok and actually getting in front of those high school students because, you know, we have about 3,800 high school students that are be graduating in uh, June or May of uh, 2020 uh, here in Forsyth County. And we have, you know, roughly uh, 349,000 um, residents in Forsyth County in North Carolina. And uh, we have uh, 3,800, so that's about 1%, a little over 1% of the population that is graduating high school this year. And out of those 3,800 students, 40% of those, so over 1,500, have been identified as a student without a plan, meaning that they are not going to college, nor are they enlisting in the military. So what are they going to do? They're probably going to go to try to work. You know, they'd be happy if they got a job at a big box store making 9.50 an hour. 
or you know if they can you know get a fast food job making eight bucks and maybe one day be a manager they're happy but guys a lot of these students don't know about the green industry so you have to educate them you need to get in front of that high school counselor you need to get in front of that high school ag teacher and tell them that you're hiring bring your equipment up there if they have ag day bring your skid steer bring your tractor bring your mowers let these students know what it is that you do you need to be there one-on-one -on -one and know the students personally and guys trust me if you get one high school student then they're going to tell their buddies that's kind of what happened with uh my nephew uh ethan he started helping us some part-time and his friends wanted to and so we've kind of got that labor pool um when we need it you know we're not hiring them full time you know they're part time they're still in high school and hopefully when ethan graduates that he wants to come on full time as some of his um friends that's already graduated you know we've hired one of them and and uh, cole's been good for us you know he's a good friend of ethan's and so we've got that connection back to the high school and i suggest you do that and then paying taxes and following government regulations guys the easiest way for me to take care of that is um, you know, we use ADP payroll services. I don't want to have to mess with that. That's eliminating one hat that I have to wear is to uh, let them handle our payroll, which automatically handles all of our uh, payroll taxes. And they even handle our workers compensation at each pay period. So, you know, it's things like that, guys, that can help alleviate some of that stress and uh, some of those uh, multiple hats that you have to wear. And uh, you don't want to get behind on payroll taxes. That'll be the first thing that the IRS uh, knocks on the door about. All right, so the benefits of a business plan. A plan will serve three key functions for you. It is a planning tool. So looking down the road, what is it that you need to do? Uh, it can also be a document that you can take to the bank uh, to get that loan to expand your business. And it can also be a benchmarking tool. Where are you at based on uh, writing that business plan. And so we do one at, at the college um, in our HOR 273 Hort Management and Marketing class. Uh, I have the students do a business plan. Most of them, um, you know, really are undecided which route they want to go in horticulture because, you know, we, uh, we introduce them to every faucet of horticulture. And so kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard to distinguish which route you want to go. But, you know, I've had students you know, do a business plan on, you know, being a sole proprietor, having no employees, buying the equipment and the truck and the trailer and paying it off in five years. And so I think that is good to do. And especially if you're new to the business or if you're only mowing right now or if you're only providing irrigation services right now and you want to expand into the mowing market, sit down and play with some numbers. How many yards do you have to cut in a week to uh, to make those payments? And remember, you know, we don't cut grass here 12 months like they do uh, in Florida. We uh, we cut grass maybe nine months a year. And, you know, then we got some leaf cleanup or whatever. So, uh, we, you know, we're lucky if we can get those 32 to 36 cuts a year. And so what, how are you going to pay for that equipment, uh, you know, during the winter months? You've got to take that into consideration. And a business plan will actually help you do that. And so the elements in this business plan, you're going to have a cover page. Exactly. You're going to have an executive summary. You're going to have a, a company summary. And you're going to have your products and services. What is it that you provide? And so if you're just doing it for the mowing aspect of your business, that's what you're going to talk about. You're going to talk about market analysis, how many people's in here, your marketing strategy. And that should be 100% <coughs> Excuse me, social media because, guys, there's not enough landscape contractors out on the social media sites. Yes, we have these influencers, these guys that have a hundred thousand plus, or you know, I've seen some guys have a million followers on Instagram, and then they come to find out they have no employees. They're just good at getting followers on Instagram, or they're good at purchasing followers. So, um, the true legit green industry expert. The field is wide open on social media. If you have a niche market, if you have a niche thing that you're selling to homeowners, guys, the, the, the sky is the limit when it comes to social media. Just organic general content and hashtagging it, using that $1.80 marketing strategy, um, you know, where you have you're not spending any money, but it's called the $1.80 theory, where you're, you're posting nine times a day on each platform so nine times a day your two cents so nine times two is 18 with 10 different hashtags 
And those hashtags need to be like Raleigh Landscaping, Charlotte Landscaping, Concord Landscaping, Concord Lawn Care, Charlotte Lawn Care, wherever you're at, it needs to be tailored to that area. And guys, if you do these posts, trust me, you're going to grab the attention. And attention is the number one asset that we are all seeking. You have to have it. Before you can sell them anything, before you can sell them a job, before you can sell them a plant, before you can sell them a flower, you have to grab people's attention and then your contact, your, your context and content within your social media has to be on point or you'll lose them straight off the bat. Guys, it works. Trust me. Trust me. It works. And then you can also use it as a financial plan. You know, Hey, if I can get a hundred yards this year to cut, or if I can get 10 new irrigation jobs that are going to have at least six different zones on it. I can do X amount of dollars and that might could pay for that geo ripper or that might can pay for that new Toro Dingo, whatever it is that you're needing. You can use it as a financial plan to kind of see the future and actually um, use it as a tool to figure out, Hey, what do I need to get before I can buy this new equipment? So your cover page is going to have your contact information and a confidentiality statement. And then your executive summary is going to be after the cover page and is going to include highlights of your uh, business plan. And then it's going to grab the, the reader's interest. And let me tell you something, that banker, if he doesn't like your executive summary, he's going to stop right there and he's not even going to look at the complete business plan. You have to grab their attention, make it sexy, make it, make it, Make it want them to read the entire thing. They're like, whoa, this guy or gal has got their stuff together. Let's let's read the whole thing. Let's give this guy some money. And then so your company summary is going to have your company vision and mission statements. You know, I do a whole lecture on a mission statement, guys. Uh, so check it out. It's on uh, it's on uh, YouTube. Uh, it's going to have your legal structure, whether you're a uh, sole proprietor, LLC, C Corp, S Corporation, partnership. It's going to have all that. It's going to list your management personnel. You know, how many people uh, are helping you run the day-to-day -day operations, or is it just you, yourself, and I? Your business location and your facilities. And, that, you know, they want to see like a map drawn out, and it's okay if it's at your house. You know, part of your business plan might to be expand um, to a facility where you have a uh, – um, covered garage, you know, uh, open garage, open bays, you know, or garage doors or whatever you, you, you're telling them what you need to get this going. And if you can borrow this amount of money and you get this amount of work this year that you'll be able to pay the bank back because they want to see when do you plan on paying this stuff back? They don't want to see, well, I'll pay it back in 30 years. You want to say, Hey, yeah, you might give me a business loan for 10 years, but I hope I can have it paid for in four. And if I can get this amount of work and, and do this, that I can definitely have it paid back within four years. That's what they want to see. They're like, wow, they've done their homework. We, we might want to loan them some money. Your products and services page, it's going to list specific products and services. You know, you're in the green industry. You know what that is more than anybody else. And you need to explain to them what they're doing. You need to have a list of suppliers with phone numbers and contact information. Let them know, hey, yeah. Yeah, they pay their bill every month. They're they're good. They're good for their money. Your primary subcontractors, if you have any, the effect of technology on your business. Guys, you can run your entire business from your phone. You don't even need a computer anymore. I don't even I don't even travel with a laptop unless I absolutely have to when I'm when I'm actually teaching a course because you can run your entire business from your phone. What are your expansion opportunities? What is it that you want to do? You know, how are you going to grow your business? Do you, do you need five new employees or do you plan on hiring three new employees this year because you plan on getting X amount of dollars of work this year? And then market analysis. What is your target market? Well, it just depends. It really does. Who is it that you want to go at? Do you want to go after uh, middle income? Do you want to go after the, the super rich? Do you want to go out, uh, go out for, uh, uh, the the couple that's married, one's a police officer, one's a nurse, you know, because that's a pretty good combined income. Whatever you want to do, you need to let them know. And guys, with the social media marketing, you can target these people selectively. You don't have to broad spread it. You can target people based on income or zip codes or addresses, you know, all on Facebook and Instagram. And then what are the market trends? And then who is your major competitors? Now, I don't like saying I have competitors. I don't. I have colleagues, guys. 
Um, and I'm going to preach that till the day I die. We're not competitors out here. Now, yes, there's always going to be that, uh, that smart ass, as I like to call them, and pardon my language, that uh, is going to think they're better and bigger than anybody else. And when you look at it and you really get involved in looking at their business, they're, they're a nobody. They're a nobody. And if you really cut down somebody that's out there trying to work hard, then you have no business being in this green industry, guys. We're all in this together. We're in it because we love it. We're in it because our blood is green and we have a passion for the outdoors. We have a passion for plants and people. That's why we are green industry professionals. Your marketing strategy, the uniqueness of your product or service. Well, guys, you know, if it's cutting grass or or laying an irrigation pipe, there's really nothing sexy about that. But you've got to come up with a with a, a way that's going to sell the banker on why they should loan you the money. What is it that makes your product or service in special? You gotta have it pricing, you gotta have your advertising, you gotta have your promotional strategies. And guys, it can be done free of charge. I, I just don't get it. You know, people are like, I'm not getting on social media. I, that's just no, that's only for the young. Wow. To throw something like that away or to let it pass you by and not jump on it when it costs you absolutely zero dollars and you can make yourself look like an industry expert with just a few posts a day. I don't get it. And a lot of people say, well, I'll just get my niece to do it. She's pretty good on that cell phone of hers. I don't think I want to have time to do it. You better learn how to do it. You have to. You have to become a practitioner on the social networks of today or you're going to find yourself 100% irrelevant. Guys, do it. I don't know how many times I can tell you to do it, but you know what? You guys are writing this stuff down. You're like, I need to be on social media. I need to talk to my niece, see what she does and, and figure this stuff out. But two days later, you're going to forget about it and you're not going to do anything. And you've listened to this course and I've got you excited and I've got you upbeat about it. But we all know that you're not going to do anything about it. But prove me wrong. I want to see you guys explode on social media. Your financial plan, balance sheet, income statement. Whoa, is this speaking Spanish to some of you guys? Maybe, maybe not. What about your cash flow statement and your financial projections? All of this can be included or has to be included in that business plan. You know, we should know where we're at at any, any given point in time financially. Well, we hope so. And if you guys have a general contractor's license, I know a lot of you irrigation contractors have GC license. They want to see balance sheets. They want to see income statements. And your accountant can produce this for you pretty quick if you're working with them uh, on a monthly basis. <coughs> Guidelines to presenting an honest picture of your business. Make sure your assumptions are realistic. Don't say you're going to go out and get 5,000 yards. It ain't going to happen. Not here in Winston-Salem anyway. Keep the language simple. Don't use technical terminology or jargon. Keep it simple, sweet. Do it in layman terms. Cover the risk as well as the opportunities and then analyze your competition thoroughly. What is it that you like about them? What is it that you don't like about them? And jot it down. Yes, you're going to have to get in your truck, maybe borrow your wife's car because they don't want to see you in your lettered up truck. You need to get out there and see what your competitors are doing. How are they marketing? Are they doing door-to-door -door flyers? Are they knocking on doors. How are they doing it? How long does it take them to do something? What are their employees like? You, you guys, you got to know your competition. You have to. You, well, you've got to know your colleague. Now, let's talk a little bit about business structures. And we're talking about sole proprietors. It is the simplest form of ownership to set up. You don't have to do anything. Maybe open up a checking account and say Eric Jones DBA doing business as turf teacher. No, I am incorporated. I am a C Corp, not a S Corp. I am a full C. I will preach that till the day I die. I love a C corporation. Now you're the sole owner of the company. You, you are it. And if you die, the company dies. Ain't nothing going to happen. It's just going to wash away. Then mowers are going to collect dust or mama's going to sell it. Uh, or maybe she's going to meet that new boyfriend, you know, a couple days later, and maybe he wants to start a lawn care business. He can just take your equipment over. That's what might happen. But it uh, exposes you to unlimited liability for business debt. That's why I like protection, guys. I want that C Corp protection. And even sometimes in an S Corp, it gets a little tricky. That's why I say, screw it. I'm going to keep it C Corp. 
I love it. And guys, I know of an instance where a guy was mowing. I don't know what he did during the week, but he mowed yards in the evenings and on Saturdays, and he was at a corner lot on a Saturday afternoon. His mower picked up a rock, and it went through the, the passenger door, and it hit this young girl in the head, and it made her a vegetable for life. This poor guy didn't have any workers' compensation. He didn't have general liability. He didn't even know what the stuff was. He didn't know you needed insurance to cut grass. They took his house. They took everything he owned to pay this girl's hospital bills, and, and which they should. I mean, he didn't have insurance. I felt sorry for him, and I also felt sorry for the girl, more so the girl. You know, she she's, you know, ruined for life, but it also ruined him for life. If he would have just had had an insurance policy he could have protected himself i mean it cost him his family too his wife left him everything i mean this this poor guy lost it all but he had to i mean he had to take care of that girl it was it was his fault i mean it was his mower his mistake he was the entrepreneur out there cutting grass on saturdays and everything falls back on you so um you know if he was a c-corp had it you know with the insurance and everything they couldn't have come after his house but being a sole proprietor, not being incorporated, and not having insurance, they took everything that he personally owned. That's why I want to keep things separate. C Corp, all the way, 100%. Now, I know, you know, there's nothing wrong with S Corps, nothing wrong with LLC. Me, personally, I just like that C Corp. So, key characteristics of sole proprietorships. Existence, as the sole proprietor, you own the assets of the company. They're yours. Financial management, business, and personal expenses must still be separated, but we all know that it intertwingles. I know a guy here in Winston-Salem, um, I asked him, I say, hey, man, you using Jobber software? Are you using QuickBooks, anything like that? He said, no, man, I use a composition book. He said, every week I write down every yard I'm going to cut, and I turn the page. It takes me two pages. I fill up front and the back of all my customers' yards. And he says, I write down what I do right beside it. If I just mow, trim, and blow, I write that down. If I pick up sticks and I do this, I write it down in the book. I'm like, man, how do you keep up with it? He's like, well, I just go back and, and add it all up at the end of the month. And uh, he said, most of them pay me cash. I'm like, well, how, how do you buy new mowers or anything like that? I'll just go buy cash. I'm like, you don't want to ever. No, man, I don't, I don't want to expand. I don't, I don't want employees. I, I just want it to be me. He said, I don't know. I, you know, the, the IRS thinks I'm a stay at home dad. My wife is the only one working. To me, that just blows my mind. It blows my mind. And that is not the entrepreneur. That is not the entrepreneur. I'm like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if, if you, if you do get called? Oh, man, I can throw that composition book away, Eric, but they can come and confiscate my computer. They are that afraid of paying a little bit of taxes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, but you know, them business expenses and personal expenses mix when, when you're operating like that liability as a sole proprietor, you are personally liable for all actions taken in the name of the business. Even if you're DBA, well, not, man, I'm a, I'm a sole proprietor. I'm an entrepreneur. My business does something wrong. It don't affect me. It does. If you're a sole proprietor, keep it separate taxes, your net income from the business is recorded as ordinary income. Sole proprietors do not pay corporate income tax. And people argue all day long. That's why I don't incorporate. I don't want to pay double taxation. Guys, if you play it right, you're not having to do that anyway. You're supposed to write yourself a check anyway. I write myself a check out of Turf Teacher Incorporated as an employee. As an employee. And my accountant says the best thing to do at the end of December 31st, you just want a little bit of money in the bank. Just, in, just enough to, to say that you made a profit, but you're supposed to pay yourself. I'm not paying double taxation if I'm paying myself as an employee. Now at the end, yes, if I don't write myself a check and then I pay myself a dividend, if I'm set up as a stockholder, yes, that's when you're going to have double taxation. Pay yourself as an employee. It, it just It just drives me crazy. And then, you know, these individuals that that are out there doing it. And, and for somebody to say, hey, you know, the IRS thinks that uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad. <sighs> what if they knocked on your door and they seen that, that trailer hooked up to that new Dodge and you've got two new V-rides on it and a walk or more? They, they know you're not a stay-at-home dad. Drives me crazy. Advantages of the sole proprietorship. I don't really see any advantage to it. Uh, minimal legal restrictions, yeah. Simple ownership form, yep. Low startup cost, yeah. Sole ownership of profits, yes. But the freedom in the decision-making process, yes. But, uh, I mean, I'm a C-Corp, and I make every decision in my company. 
every single one of them. I just don't like, and it, it, I don't, I actually see business cards that says, Eric, you know, I'm using my name because I'm not going to use these people's name, but I've seen business cards that says Eric W. Jones, DBA as Eric's mowing. God almighty. I mean, why people, why, why not go incorporate and make it like, make it look like you're a legit business. When you got DBA on your business card, that means that this is a hobby, that it is not your true passion. You are not the entrepreneur. Ain't no way, Jose. Incorporate, form the LLC, and do the things right and pay your taxes. It's just that simple. Disadvantages of a sole proprietorship. Maybe that, maybe this will make some of y'all think, uh, I better incorporate. Unlimited personal liability. Just like with the individual. They hit the little girl through the window with a rock. He had to pay for that. He had to pay for that. If he had been incorporated and had insurance, it, he wouldn't have lost his house. He wouldn't have lost his wife. He wouldn't have lost his family. He wouldn't have lost anything. He could have only lost what the business owned. There's less available capital. You know, you're going to go in there, and it's like my buddy that you know says he's a stay-at-home dad. What if he needs to go in there and borrow money, uh, you know, to to get some new equipment? You know, what if he had to have it? What if those mowers broke down and he had to go and get it? And he has no proof of income that he doesn't even exist. I mean, there's less available capital. Possibly difficulty in obtaining long-term financing. Ain't going to happen, man. Where, where's your corporate tax returns? Oh, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home dad. What are you talking about? Well, we need to see corporate tax documents. We need to see that you pay taxes, that you're a legit business. Well, man, I've been doing this for 20 years. Well, where's the proof? All my customers pay me cash. The bank is going to laugh you out the door as you walk out. Disillusion of the business in the event of the owner's death. Yes, yes, it, it, it can happen, and we've seen it happen. Way too many people die young these days. Partnership. Partnership is a relationship between two or more persons who join to carry on a trade or business. Partnerships. Don't like them. Don't want to do it. Ain't going to happen. Uh, I want to be fully in control of my business. Each person contributes money, property, labor, or skill. Each partner expects to share in the profits and losses in the business. There are two types of partnerships, general and limited. Now, existence of these partnerships. A general partnership can be formed through an oral agreement. I'd still get it in writing, my friend. General partners own the assets of the company. Limited partners have limited liability in the company. So those limited partners could be, let's take an example of a young guy graduating high school and wants to start a lawn care business. Mom and dad saved up some money for him to go to college, and he says, ain't going to happen, ain't going to do it. I want to mow grass. Mom and dad, can I borrow money to start a lawn care business? Yes, son, we had $40,000 we saved up for your tuition. We'll give you that money because you want to be an entrepreneur. Yes, they want to be a partner in the business. Well, they can be a limited partner and they could only lose the $40,000 that they put into it. So if the son goes out and has a few beers while he's cutting grass on a Saturday afternoon and goes and cuts another one and gets in a major car wreck, they're only liable for the $40,000 that they've put in. The young man could be in a lot more trouble and pay a lot more money. So that's when limited partners, so they have that protection. A partnership exists as long as the partners agree it will and as long as all of the general partners remain in the partnership. If a general partner leaves, then the partnership dies, even if one of the partners dies um, and falls over with a heart attack. Um, it, it, it would dissolve that partnership immediately. And a lot of times that happens. My vet uh, that I used to take the dogs to, he had a partner. His partner died and um, you know he didn't have enough money to, to pay off. Uh, his partner's uh, wife's uh, part of the business. Luckily, they had what they called a uh, business. Um, it's almost like an insurance. It's like a life insurance policy for a business owner. It was, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it may be on the next slide, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, they had a, a business owner's policy on each other in case something like that happened, that those proceeds would go and pay the other spouse off and so they wouldn't have to you know 
you know, he would have had to sell the whole business to pay her her half. I mean, it was righteously hers. Her husband helped build that business up too, so it was hers. But they had an insurance policy that would pay her off, so they wouldn't have to sell the business that he could keep running it. Um, uh, you know, the partnership was was dissolved, but you know, they were able to keep the veterinary building and keep the practice open. So, uh, but financial management. The partnership should keep separate bank accounts and financial records for the business. Uh, know whether there are profits and losses, and then an outside accountant for record keeping is highly recommended, as it is in any type of business structure. The liability, all owners and general partnerships have personal and unlimited liability for all actions and debts undertaken in the name of the business. So if your business partner messes up, you all are responsible for it. Each partner is responsible for acts of other partners when they act in the name of the business. Limited partners have no personal liability for the business of the partnership. Limited partners are only liable for the previously agreed upon contribution or investment of the business. As we talked about, mom and dad loaning the son the money that did not want to go to college. Advantages, ease of formation. Uh, direct profit rewards, larger management base than that of a sole proprietorship. So each partner has uh, management responsibilities. And guys, really, you see more partnerships in law firms, accounting firms, uh, maybe even in a medical practice. Uh, you know, you, you see it more in the... Um, um, the professional services uh, that are out there. I'll always remember uh, that TV show, a Abby Beal or Allie Beal. You know, she was really fighting to become partner in the law firm, and, you know, eventually she did. And that made her uh, a general partner. She was responsible for, um, uh, you know, any of the mishaps that happened uh, in the business name. Disadvantages, unlimited personal liability of general partners, multiple decision makers, I don't like that. Limited life of the business. You know, if one of the partners dies, the whole partnership uh, dissolves. Agreement may be difficult to change, and then the partnership dissolves in the event of a death. Uh, partnership registration in North Carolina Limited and Limited Liability Partnerships must register through the North Carolina Secretary of State. North Carolina-based partnerships must submit domestic forms of registration. And then out-of-state partnerships and partnerships from other countries must submit foreign forms of registration. C-Corps, your corporate identity. If you decide to do business under a corporate identity, you will have to comply with the requirements of state law to create the corporation. A business assumes a corporate identity in North Carolina when it files with the North Carolina Secretary of State and files for the Articles of Incorporation, the existence. Incorporation gives your business a legal existence. The business can own assets and conduct business in its own name. Wow, my company can own a beach house? Well, duh, yes, it can own property, guys. You need to send your landscape um, customers or your vendors down to the beach uh, once a year, right? So you can use it the other 51 weeks of the year. A corporation lasts as long as the stockholders determine its life, and then a corporation continues to exist even if one or more of the shareholders die. Financial management, separate bank accounts for the corporation, separate business records. And the corporation, not the shareholders, owns the money that the shareholders pay to buy the corporation stock, all the assets, and the money earned by the corporation. Liability. The owners of the corporation, known as the stockholders, are not personally liable for the losses of the business. The corporate entity is responsible for the business debts. And so, guys, it again, it gives you that separation and it makes that that company, that corporation, its own person. It exists solely by itself and it, it can it can own property, it can lose property, it can file bankruptcy. It is its own legal entity. Taxes. The corporation must file income tax returns and pay taxes on profits, and dividends are paid to the shareholders by the corporation are also taxed to each shareholder. That's where that double taxation comes into play. But guys, you know, you know that, that comes into play when you're a billion dollar company probably, but if you're a landscape contractor or irrigation contractor and you're writing yourself a paycheck, you know, the corporation is, I mean, it's making money if it only makes a dollar a year, if it has a dollar profit. And that's what you'd want. 
why not write yourself a check and, and kind of and take the, the money out? Or you have the, the right to leave the money in the company. If you don't want to take a check, you don't have to. In an S corporation, you do. But that C corporation, you don't. You can let the corporation build up cash value after it pays the tax. Other requirements. A board of directors and corporate officers stockholders as owners of the company you got to have all this you got to have periodic board meetings and guys that could be sitting at biscuitville in the morning just talking briefly as long as you make record of it maintenance of board minutes uh, minutes and approval of corporate resolutions and then a board empowered to authorize certain actions like borrowing money and entering into contracts and then allocating corporate resources beyond routine business transactions let's see uh, it is a separate legal entity. You have limited liability for the stockholders, uh, unlimited life of the business, and then availability of capital resources. And then you can transfer ownership through the sale of stock. These are all advantages, advantages of a C corporation. And so you have a son or daughter that comes on board or uh, wants to, to buy mom and dad out, you can just easily transfer the ownership through the sale of stock. It makes handing it over to... Um, your heirs a lot easier. Disadvantages of the C Corp. Complex and expensive organization, not that bad. Uh, limitations on corporate activities and decisions by the corporate charter. Extensive regulation and record keeping requirements, yes, but I mean, you got an accountant, you're doing everything you need to do there. Uh, but then a double taxation once on the corporate profits and then another on dividends. Just don't pay yourself dividends. Keep the money in the corporation or write yourself a payroll check and pay unemployment security and, and, and your state and federal taxes out of, you do the right thing, you set yourself up as an employee, you can have that uh, C Corp, you know, just, you know, making, making a little bit of money, not much. You know, as long as you're making a profit, you're not gonna have any attention from the IRS. Filing for the incorporation, uh, contact Secretary of State, Corporate's division to obtain proper forms to complete and begin your filing process. Forms are available on the Secretary of State website. You can actually print them off there, drive down to Raleigh, and form that corporation that day, or you can hire an attorney to do it and let it take six months, or you can do an online service like My Incorporation or My Inc. or whatever and do it pretty quick. Your corporation's name must include the following words or abbreviations, Company, Corporation, Incorporated, Limited, CO, Corp, Inc., or Limited. And so, you know, you can do, you know, ours is Turf Teacher Inc. and Elite Landscape Service Inc. Uh, but if I wanted to form another company <coughs> called Elite Landscape Service Limited, I can do that because it has a different legal name. It has to has either one of those Elite Landscape Company, Elite Landscape Corporation, all of that is different. But if you do the ink or whatever, makes it a total different entity with its own separate federal tax ID number. All right, so filing for the corporation in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina-based corporation must submit the domestic articles of incorporation. It's a 125 fee. Out-of-state corporations must use the foreign forms. It's $250. And then corporations are required to file an annual report due April 15th. But as you know, all corporate taxes are due March 15th. C-Corps, again, avoid double federal taxation by electing to be treated as an S corporation, subchapter S of the Internal Revenue uh, uh, Code. You have to form that C corporation first and then file for subchapter S uh, to get that um, S corporation status. But that is going to require you to pass, uh, make yourself write you a paycheck at the end of the year. And so what it is, Let's say you did $100,000 worth of business and you have $50,000 of profit. You're going to have to write yourself that $50,000 check and it passed through your personal social security number and you pay taxes on it that way. You have to make, you have to, you have to pay yourself. You do. And you, if you're an S corporation, you've got to do the corporate taxes before you can do your personal taxes. Hey, with a C Corp, I wait till the very last minute, hey, March 14th. Hey, accountant, let's get this crap done. But I've already filed my personal taxes because I've been writing myself a paycheck. I've already, I've already got my return back on my personal paycheck or my personal taxes. I didn't have to worry about, um, you know, doing the corporate tax a little bit later. But if you're S corporation, it's got to be done first. S corporation passes its items of income, loss, deduction, and credits through its shareholders to be included on their separate returns, and it goes through your social security number.
which may or may not be a good thing for you. Uh, requirements for the S Corp, domestic corporation with one class of stock, no more than 75 shareholders who are citizens or legal residents in the U.S. All shareholders must consent to C Corporation status, use of a permitted tax year, and then filing of IRS Form 2553. Shares, uh, this is limited liability company. Uh, and I'm going to kind of get through this, guys, because we've been talking an hour for this, and these courses are supposed to be an hour long. Uh, but shares of the LLC and their characteristics of both sole proprietors and corporate identities must consist of at least one member and then offer some protection from liability for actions taken by your company or by other members of your company. Federal income taxes are paid only on income distributed to members as ordinary income. Can be expensive to organize. Yes, they're going to cost more than a corporation and requires more administrative work. And so what it is, you're having both of of, of both of good worlds, I'd say, if you have, because you can combine what, what you can use in a sole proprietorship and parts of things in a corporation. But you do have to pass your income through um, members as ordinary income. Advantages, limited disclosure of owners, limited documentation, no, at, no advanced IRS filings, no public disclosure of finances, limited liability for managers and members, a... Ma <laughs> Let's say a manager is, um, you know, somebody that actually forms it. They're part of like the owner. And then you've got your members uh, who are like your, your, you know, I forget. I'm, I'm ashamed to say that. I really am. Um, managers manage the day-to-day -day operation. Members are the ones that create it. That's right. That's right. That's what happened. And then the ability to uh, delegate management to a non-member. Depending on the number of business owners, the LLC is taxed differently. An LLC with one owner is taxed as a sole proprietorship. An LLC with more than one owner may elect to be taxed as a partnership or as a corporation uh, entity. So you got to have one or more. So if you're that, that sole operator, hey, man, I formed an LLC. I'm no longer a sole proprietorship. I'm a true entrepreneur. Well, guess what? You're still going to pay taxes as a sole proprietor if you're an LLC and it's only you, yourself, and I. Limited liability companies are required to file an annual report. They're due April 15th of the year following the creation year and every year thereafter. Joint venture. A joint venture is a special business arrangement that exists when two or more companies join to undertake a specific project. The management is often assigned to one individual or company. Brings companies together with complementary resources and strengths. And guys, I think the perfect example of this, you could say Landscape Company A and Landscape Company B uh, are too small separately to take on a big uh, maintenance project so they combine forces and they form a joint venture just on maintaining that one property and so everybody brings their crews in on a Wednesday they cut the property they prune it they do everything they need to do but then they do their separate thing the other days of the week and they form that joint venture just to get that one job complete it is important to consult an attorney when forming this type of venture to ensure all aspects of the risk are covered. Individual state contractor licensing agencies may have specific laws require, uh, regarding joint ventures. Obtain proper licensing prior to beginning applicable contracting work. So the joint venture itself may need to have its own state license. They may also need to have their own workers' compensation and general liability, guys. So uh, you need to check on that before doing it. Choose wisely the name of your business. Always do it, guys. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that before I let you go. Uh, but choose wisely the name you choose affects your customers' impressions of your company. Do your homework. Study it. Go to namecheck.com, guys. Uh, that'll tell you what names are available. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I did not want to be called the turf teacher at first. You know, it come across and I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I, I really wanted to be the plant professor. But some of the social media names were taken for that. And so that's why I decided to go Turf Teacher. And thank goodness they were because I absolutely love Turf Teacher now. It was available on all social media sites. Everything was available. The website, turfteacher.com, every social media, every email address, everything was available. I'm like, man, that's me. And then I hired Lee Smith with Titan Graphic Works to design my logo and, and got the ball rolling. I absolutely love it. And it is what is for me. Uh, but you can go to namecheck.com and check and see which social media names and websites are available with 
uh, you know, what, whatever you're thinking about naming your company. Contact the Secretary of State Corporations Division in order to file the articles of incorporation or organization to determine name availability for corporate and limited liability companies. So basically, you can just go to the state's website, Secretary of State, do a name search, and, you know, let's type in turf teacher, you know, and then you can select all names listed or whatever, and it's going to come back and say, well, well, there is a turf teacher LLC, but that means that turf teacher Inc. is available. So, you know, uh, but doubtfully there's any more turf teachers out there, but there are. Trust me, go and look for landscaping. Type in that, and you're going to come up with several, several names. And so, guys, when it is come time to name your business, I don't like having ING uh, in my name. I don't like that. I like landscape service. I don't like landscaping. So I wouldn't want to name my company Elite Landscaping, Inc. I like Landscape Service, Inc., Elite Landscape Service Incorporated, or Elite Landscape Management Incorporated, or Elite Landscape Construction, Inc. I don't like Elite Mowing. I don't like Elite Constructing. I don't like Elite Building. I don't like ING. I like to use names that's going to make me sound more like a professional service, like Management Consultant, Elite Landscape Consultant or Elite Landscape Consultants. Not Elite Landscape Consulting, I would rather use Elite Landscape Consultants. So try not to use the ING, try not to use your name, but if you like your name in the company, that's totally up to you. Again, I like keeping everything separate. And guys, I appreciate your attention. Glad you listened to this lecture. Let me know what you think in the comments below on YouTube. And guys, I will see you in the next lecture. Turf Teacher is out.